Hi, thank you for joining me today. We've been reading through A Course in Miracles, the main text, and today we're going to read chapter 21. Well, we'll start with chapter 21. We won't get all the way through it. I think uh, based on the length of the introduction, we'll read both uh, the introduction and uh, section two, The Forgotten Song. So let us begin. A Course in Miracles, chapter 21, Reason and Perception. Introduction. Projection makes perception. The world you see is what you give it, nothing more than that. But though it is no more than that, it is not less. Therefore, to you, it is important. It is the witness to your state of mind, the outside picture of an inward condition. As a man thinketh, so does he perceive. Therefore, seek not to change the world, but choose to change your mind about the world. Perception is a result, not a cause. And that is why order of difficulty in miracles is meaningless. Everything looked upon with vision is healed and holy. Nothing perceived without it means anything. And there is no meaning. There, and where there is no meaning, there is chaos. Damnation is your judgment on yourself. And this you will project upon the world. See it as damned, and all you see is what you did to hurt the Son of God. If you behold disaster and catastrophe, you tried to crucify him. If you see holiness and hope, you joined the will of God to set him free. There is no choice that lies between these two decisions. You will see the witness to the circle you made, and then learn from this to recognize which one you choose. Section two, the forgotten song. Never forget the world, never forget the world, the sightless sea must be imagined for what it really looks like is unknown to them. They must infer what could be seen from evidence forever indirect and reconstruct their inferences as they stumble and fall because of what they did not recognize or walk unharmed through open doorways that they thought were closed. And so it is with you. You do not see your clues for in. Your cues for inference are wrong, and so you stumble and fall down upon the stones you did not recognize, but fail to be aware you can go through the doors you thought were closed, but which stand open before unseeing eyes waiting to welcome you. How foolish it is to attempt to judge what could be seen instead. It is not necessary to imagine what the world must look like. It must be seen before you recognize it for what it is. You can be shown which doors are open and you can see which, where safety lies and which way leads to darkness, which to light. Judgment will always give you false directions, but vision shows you where to go. Why should you guess? There is no need to learn through pain. And gentle lessons are required joyously and remembered gladly. What gives you happiness, you want to learn and not forget. It is not this you would deny. Your question is whether the means by which this course is learned will bring you to the joy it promises. If you believed it would, the learning of it would be no problem. You are not a happy learner yet because you still remain uncertain that vision gives you more than judgment does, and you have learned that both you cannot have. The blind become accustomed to their world by their adjustments to it. They think they know their way about in it. They learned it. 
though not through joyous lessons, but through the stern necessity of limits they believed they could not overcome. And still believing this, they hold those lessons dear and cling to them because they cannot see. They do not understand the lessons keep them blind. This they do not believe. And so they keep the world they learned to see in their imagination, believing that their choice is that or nothing. They hate the world they learned through pain and everything they think it is, uh, I'm sorry, and everything they think is in it serves to remind them that they are incomplete and bitterly deprived. Thus, they define their life and where they live, adjusting to it as they think they must, afraid to lose the little that they have. And so it is with all who see the body as all they have and all their brothers have. They try to teach each other and they fail and fail again. And they must adjust to loneliness, believing that to keep the body is to save the little that they have. Listen. Perhaps you catch a hint of an ancient state not quite forgotten, dim, perhaps, and yet not altogether unfamiliar, like a song whose name is long forgotten and the circumstances in which you heard completely unremembered. Whole song has stayed within you, but a little wisp of melody attached not to a person or a place or anything in particular. But you remember from just this little part how lovely was the song, how wonderful the setting where you heard it, and how you loved those who were there and listened with you. Notes are nothing, yet you have kept them with you, not for themselves, but as a soft reminder of what would make you weep if you remembered how dear it was to you. You could remember, yet you are afraid, believing you could lose the world you learned since then. And yet you know that nothing in the world you learned is half as dear as this. Listen and see if you remember an ancient song you knew so long ago and held more dear than any melody you taught yourself to cherish since. Beyond the body, beyond the sun and stars, past everything you see and past and yet somehow familiar is an arc of golden light that stretches to you, stretches as you look into a great and shining circle. And all the circle fills with light before your eyes. The edges of the circle disappear and what is in it is no longer contained at all. The light expands and covers everything, extending to infinity, forever shining and with no break or limit anywhere. Within it, everything is joined in perfect continuity. Nor is it possible to imagine that anything could be outside, for there is nowhere that this light is not. This is the vision of the Son of God, whom you know well. Here is the sight of him who knows the Father. Here is the memory of what you are, a part of this with all of it within and joined to us as surely as all is joined in you. Accept the vision that can show you this and not the body. You know the ancient song and know it well. Nothing will ever be as dear to you as is this ancient hymn of love the Son of God sings to his Father still. And now the blind can see for that the same song they honor in, uh, sorry, let me do that again. And now the blind can see for that same song they sing in honor of their creator gives praise to them as well. The blindness that they made will not withstand the memory of this song. And they will look upon the vision of the son of God, remembering who he is they sing of. What is a miracle but this remembering? And who is there in whom this memory lies not?
the light in one awakens it in all. And when you see it in your brother, you are, you are remembering it for everyone. This is a powerful chapter. Uh, I want to just go back to a couple of things. Um, I wonder if I can find it quickly. The uh, place where we were talking about what happened to Christ on the cross and his, uh, his uh, crucifixion. Let's start with perception and remember that, as I like to say in my own words, there isn't anything out here. Everything that we experience is a result of what comes from within us. And this is what this chapter is talking about. In the introduction, projection makes perception. The world you see is what you gave it, nothing more than that. This is a great way to describe the crucifixion. Damnation is your judgment on yourself and this you will project upon the world. See it as damned and all you see is what you did to hurt the son of God. If you behold disaster and catastrophe, you tried to crucify him. If you see holiness and hope, you joined the will of God to set him free. There is no choice that lies between these two decisions. So if I understand this correctly, what, what is being said here is First of all, everything you see and the way you feel about it is yours. It's your perception. You're creating what you see through your experience of life and your interpretation of it. And so once we understand that, we really only have two ways of looking at things. We either look through our eyes in a physical way and we forget that we're creating what we're looking at or we look out remembering that what we're seeing is a reflection of what is within us and what we're choosing to see. So I've never before this uh, book never seen the crucifixion described any other way other than the crucifixion. And yet here we realize that what we have is a choice of how to look at it. So if you behold disaster and catastrophe, you tried to crucify him. If you, if you see holiness and hope, you joined the will of God to set him free. So people wanted to kill him. And if the whole world gangs up on you and wants to kill you, might not the best thing to do would be to leave. Just a thought. It's, it's very interesting to me. So then moving on into the forgotten song section two of this chapter. Never forget the world, the sightless sea must be imagined for what it really looks like is unknown to them. It's a great uh, reminder that if you had not eyes, what you would be imagining is out here is very different than if you have eyes. And that's why the vision that it talks about in this chapter 
is so, uh, and the chapter before even, that, that was the last paragraph of the last chapter we read uh, last week, uh, was speaking about vision. True vision comes from within, not through our eyes. And that's really the point here. So I hope you have a great uh, time working with these uh, two sections of this chapter today. If you'd like additional support, you can reach out to me, 907-351-3003. Uh, texting is best. You can also message me through Facebook or SoundCloud or YouTube. Also, it occurs to me, I should be saying this all along, on Facebook, you go to Love by Light, that group, to see the posts. And those posts have the text in full. There's a 5,000 character limitation on YouTube and a 4,000 character limitation on SoundCloud. So quite often the um, text gets truncated for space on YouTube or SoundCloud, but on Facebook, the text is there. There's also free copies of um, A Course in Miracles available uh, free digital copies. So if you don't have a copy, you can go out and find one digitally. And if you have trouble with that, message me and I can get you um, the, the free PDF that is available. For those of you that are watching the video, if you've seen the squirrel, it's that time of year. They're gathering their pine cones. He's been busy today. Thank you again for joining me. Until the next reading, namaste and much love.